Jason Floyd of the MAReport.com here in Orlando, Florida. We're here with Steve Montgomery. Steve, well, you're supposed to be fighting tomorrow night, and that's not happening. Show canceled. But as uh, the people see in this video, you did make weight. You did make weight, and that was really the big thing coming off the alternate fire. The UFC wanted to make sure you can make weight. Uh, and really, it was just another day at the office that making 170 is not an issue. Yeah. Hey, you know, man, it, it's been a year of unfulfilled promises, and nothing I've planned has gone my way. And it, the thing that sucks the most is it's not a lack of effort on my part or my team's part. We have done everything we could, gone through opponents. We finally got a guy who was going to come out and fight with me and stand with me. It would have been an entertaining fight. I would have gotten to show my skills, and then all of a sudden the promoter goes crazy, literally within an hour of the weigh-in, and I find out that you know I did that entire weight cut for pretty much nothing. But I made the weight, no problem. My nutritionists are excellent. I'm just getting to the point where I've got to fight ASAP. I don't care what weight class it is. I guarantee to Dana White this, that in the last three years, I've had more opponents backing out and more fight cancellations than the UFC might have had in, in its entire history. It has been ridiculous. We can't get guys to fight me. And the worst part is, is so many times last year, I stepped up to fight guys at heavier weight classes for no money and fought guys you know, out of the UFC for no money just to show myself. And then now when I get my chance in the UFC, I screw it up with a botched weight cut. And then I make the perfect weight cut and a psychotic promoter goes literally nuts with an hour, an hour's notice just all of a sudden because three fighters backed out on the card. He just left about... I'd say close to 16 fighters just hanging, no pay, no nothing, and just canceled the entire show right when we got to the weigh-in. So it's, it's a huge disappointment, but I'm to the point where I'm going to reanalyze my career and make a really strong push this summer. And one way or another, I'm either going to get a belt for a major promotion or I'm going to get in the UFC and get a secure job there. In what way are you going to reanalyze your career? I'm not sure, you know, if I've got to stay at 170 for the UFC, great. If I've got to go to 85 for the UFC, great, because they called me on last minute to fight a couple of their 85ers for late replacements. I'm going to find what is the best thing for me, the most comfortable for my body, which the 170 weight cut was easy. I would gladly do that weight cut 15 times for the UFC in a year. No problem. But I'm not going to keep cutting weight for these small shows that we're literally offering to fight for free on just to get a fight and then they cancel on an hour's notice. So if I can get a job with the UFC, I'd go to 45. I'd find a way to do it. I'd go to 205 if they need a replacement for Daniel Cormier. I don't care. But I'm definitely going to do some reanalyzation with my team, my management, and my nutritionist, and we're going to figure out the best way to push forward and stop letting all my supporters down. Is this the first time in your career where literally it's been weigh-in day and the fight card gets canceled? Nope, this is the second time. Had it happen in Myrtle Beach as well back in 2013. I got down to 175 pounds, was getting ready to do the last four pounds, and at least they called me before I did the last four pounds and were nice enough to say, hey, it's canceled, and it was actually due to the commission and some of the promoter, he, he had a couple of things he didn't do for the commission. He didn't get a couple of contracts in on time or something, and it was a commission-related incident. This time was the first time a promoter has literally just gone MIA. Calls us this morning, tells us he's scared and might cancel the show, didn't hear back from them since. Get to the weigh-ins, and the athletic commission had to tell us the show was canceled. Obviously, you feel bad for yourself because you miss out on a payday. But I mean, your opponent takes this fight on two weeks' notice, and now he's he's left trying to figure out what he's going to do. Yeah, my my opponent comes down from Boston, finds out his hotel rooms got canceled today, and that he's stranded here for two days, waiting for his flight back with no hotel. And you know, I don't really feel bad for myself, but it's all these people around me who are supporting me and doing things just out of the you know out of the good of their heart and I can't give it back to them by winning or doing something like that I'm tired of being the year's biggest pity party I'm tired of having to talk so much I'm so ready to get out in the cage and just let a left high kick speak for itself you know I'm just I'm tired of talking I want my actions to speak louder than my worthless words and of course I know now it looks like June's going to be your next fight I mean is this literally where you usually go back into the to the gym tomorrow get ready for that fight and keep uh, preparing and, and ready for, or maybe that phone call comes sooner than that. You know, I'm not really sure. The June 20th fight was me and my manager's plan to make sure no matter what, a foolproof fight would happen. And if I've got to fight that fight, so be it. I'll do whatever it takes. But at the same time, I'm literally begging you, Dana White. I'm begging you, take me off this regional scene. I had 23 guys back out since I got off the show. I've done everything in my power 
I have tried to contact every show. Take me off the regional scene. I'm healthy. I can make 70. I'll go to 85. I'll go to 205. Put me in the UFC. You will get entertaining fights. I will come out to take people's heads off or get mine taken off in the process. You will not get boring fights, and I will talk myself up, and people will watch these fights. I'm begging you, Dana, take me off this regional scene. As a veteran of the sport, is it tough for you to find fights to where guys literally just say, once they find out who you, who you are, where you train, the guys you've been in the cage with, they're saying, hey, I won't fight that guy. It, it's a nightmare. I've had to talk... I've had to talk myself down to guys and tell them, dude, I'm beatable. Go look at my losses. I've got two losses. The only thing I think keeping me sometimes getting fights, the four I had last year, was, you know, because I do have two losses. And I'm thankful for those losses so guys will at least take the fight because I am beatable. I have to talk myself down to convince these opponents to take the fights. The four fights I got last year, except for the very first one, were all literally like a process of giving birth. It was the most stressful thing in each fight. And actually, the one I had in May, we had six opponents back out. Finally got a guy to take it on a week's notice. The first fight in Titan, we finally got a 205-er to come down to middleweight to fight me on three weeks' notice. That was a nightmare. And then finally, I had a fight against Brock Jardine that I got to have a six-week camp for. He accepted the fight, but I was fighting a UFC veteran for little to no money. And he was definitely in shape. He might have been on a losing streak, but now he's gone out, gone out and knocked out two middleweights. So I'm fighting all these stud athletes that are taking the fights on last minute notice, and I'm doing it for chump change, and it's a birth, it's a process of giving birth to get the guys to take the fights. Please put me in the UFC. I don't care if I'm a late replacement guy. You can tell me that all my next six fights in, the, in my contract will be on two weeks notice in Australia on the moon. I don't care. I want to get in the UFC ASAP. I didn't get the fight on the show. It's killing me. I need to be in the UFC. No more wasting time. Would you say frustration is the best way to describe your feelings at this point? A lot of frustration. And we, we've had the talk before. It's like intercourse without getting the fulfillment over and over and over again. And I'm going nuts. I'm literally going nuts. I've got blue fists right here. Uh, they haven't gotten to throw punches 100% power yet all year. And last time fighting four, four times in a year was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. And expecting that this year, expecting what I was going to get on the show. And I botched that. That's on me. And then we tried to do everything. My weight cut this time was so easy, done so perfectly. And then the, the whole show falls apart within an hour. It literally could could not be a worst case scenario for me but I'm, I'm gonna come forward I'm gonna get fights if I got to go win a, a promotional belt do what I got to do or if I can just get in the UFC against Uriah Hall in 30 minutes notice I'll do whatever it takes before I let you go here I gotta ask ATT finally got a win this week on on the alternate fighter Hyder Hassan going out there it backed up everything he said 48 seconds uh what was it like for you to watch that, see your teammate go out there and perform the way he did? I was ecstatic, and I'd say that is probably the closest I've been this year to feeling like I won, especially because, you know, me and Hyder are really close friends. We're always on the same mental mindset of, you know, you, you know what you're capable of doing, you know what you're going to do, and he embodies that show up mentality. Some guys are great in the gym, and they don't show up when it's time to fight. Hyder shows up every time, and it sucks so bad to sit right there and have the same mentality and not get to go out and do it. But when I got to see Hyder go out with his mentality and perform that way, it was so motivational. And to be able to watch it play out this week, it, it, it made the weight cut so easy. He was my motivation all week. Hyder's the man. He's going to continue to do great things because I know how he thinks. And the way he thinks is it's just on another level. It really is. Steve, I know this is not the way you wanted to talk to me. We were hopefully going to talk after the fight, but hopefully you get that shot in the UFC, man. Thank you so much, Jason. You're the man. You've, you've done too much for me this year.